That's mine. My internet's really bad. Okay. Uh, were you guys like happy with their response for metaprogramming and like what we would use it for? What did Am they I, say? Not... I, I remember reading this, but wait, let me. <laughs> I think I didn't really. I I read I read it, but then I think there was some links, and I didn't have the nerve to read deeper into it. It was a bit complicated. It sounded, yeah. <laughs> what is this so? Uh, Tuesday. Here we go. Right. So, yeah. I don't know why my computer goes so slow when we do these, but. Yes. What I mean, that? yeah, I, that I felt like, yeah, I'd done that kind of thing yeah. before. I think that was, it. this was interesting, but it didn't necessarily, I still didn't necessarily know like what that meant, but. Okay. So yeah, this is, what Kevin's saying is basically the only way that I've used it before. Yeah. Um, with like listing and mapping. But yeah. We could make our own tidyverse functions too. And mm. I've maybe used it for like a ggplot. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ggplots. But I was just curious if you guys were like, oh yeah, that clears it up for me. Because it didn't. <laughs> I was told by everyone's explanation. <laughs> I wasn't like, oh, there's this huge thing that like I haven't thought about. I guess. Um, yeah. But I guess it's good to feel like it wasn't totally like, I wasn't totally missing something, but I'm interested. Yeah, I'm kind of interested by like what John said about like, it could be helpful for users more than the developers, but I still don't really know about that but everything else I was like yeah that's kind of how I've used it or without realizing or like what I'm thought but without being like which is a complete slam dunk of a reason to need to know about it okay well I will get started with the second half then um yeah, I look back on this today. I didn't look at the, I haven't looked back at my uh, presentation because I was on a different laptop. So um, I think in the, the kind of the, the kind of section that's very like, here's an example, I might deviate from this and just go to copy and stuff into our studio and we can kind of work through it as if it's like an exercise that we've got the answer to. Uh, still don't like that though, that section. So we'll see when we get to it if it makes more sense. Um, Parsing and grammar, I think, is okay. Um, so the definitions here uh, in that parsing is the way in which uh, the language takes, I was going to say parses a string, very unhelpful, takes a string and I would say like how it kind of like interprets it, so therefore like the kind of meaning it ascribes to the various bits and uh, then it's got a grammar, which is the set of rules of that. Um, so the first bit of this was thinking about operator precedence. Um, and you've got to have conventions over what takes precedence because sometimes there could be ambiguity um, and you might have, if you don't, well, yeah, for, for obvious reasons. Um, stuff like with arithmetic, which is kind of where a lot of this stuff relates it's pretty straightforward um, because we use arithmetic elsewhere. So we already are, understand that precedence uh, or like it's the same as that, so it matches. Um, there are apparently over 30 operators which have 18 different groups of precedence. Um, and I think it was kind of like, you can find details of these if you have one that you're particularly interested in or that you're using, but all, you know, 
it's unlike you know it's not really practical to just like memorize all of them um and so really the best way to make sure things are happening in the way that you want if there's any kind of possibility of ambiguity then you just want to use brackets associativity which is a bit of a, a tricky word okay so sometimes you have the same operator used twice uh like the example that was given was a lot of stuff like um you know your arithmetic kind of stuff so you have one plus two plus three etc and often that doesn't matter which order you do them in um but firstly you still need an order to do it in because you still need to like have stuff happen in a certain order um but also it matters because like it's not always straightforward so for example uh there was this discussion about how the plus sign can be used in a non-associative way which means for example with gd plot you get uh, when there's a plus that means that the next bit of the gd plot gets that it's kind of layered on top um and that means the earlier layers ultimately end up beneath the kind of ones that come later so it does matter the order in which they go because it can be different if you switch them around and so therefore the kind of rule of thumb is that most operators are left associative which means that if you have operations on the left uh, they would be evaluated first um, but the exception there are two exceptions to that uh, which are exponentiation um, so if you had like two to the power of three to the power of two then you do the three to the power of two first so you knew what the two was to the power of shouldn't have used the same numbers in that example but you understand and assignment because you do the stuff that is getting assigned first so that you know what's getting assigned and then you assign it to the left so it's the other way around okay passing so it's possible to uh, pass expressions that are kind of stored in strings, um, which this was actually, this was something which I felt like I had done before, although it does say in this section, like if you find yourself doing this a lot, then sort yourself out. Um, so maybe that's not ideal. It was actually, I don't think it was in R, I think it was in Python that I was doing something similar to this. But anyway, sometimes you have code that gets stored in strings for some reason. Um, and so then you can use the R lang function pass expr. Uh, so here, for example, you can put, yeah, so you've got x1 is this string, but that just remains as a string if you just assign it. Uh, but yeah, and so if you're like, is it a cool object? And it is not. But if you then pass that, which is this, then you get this, which no longer has its little stringies around it, and it's a call. Very exciting. Okay, there are loads of exercises. I'm almost sure I didn't do all these exercises. Okay. R uses parentheses in two slightly different ways, as illustrated by these two calls. Compare and contrast the two uses by referencing the abstract syntax trees, ASTs. Uh, did I compare? Okay, I'm just going to click and see if it does something. Ooh, it did do something. Okay. Great. I mean, this is, I think I meant to have a break here. So, it can be part of the function or it can represent a call to the function. So, oh yeah, because I've got these horrible, not very aesthetic ASTs. Uh, is it going to be easier if I switch some of this to uh, I mean, it's marginally better, I don't know. So I guess it's not it's not giving us two 
uh, brackets. So the function call bracket doesn't get shown in the AST because it's kind of, I guess, already interpreted as part of it's going to happen. Uh, I'm not quite sure how these two make that clear. Why would you tick around a parenthesis? I'm so confused what this is even trying to accomplish. Well, I think <laughs> that means the function uh, parentheses. So it can be done in uh, prefix form as opposed to infix form. But I'm not quite sure what that does if you, in this um, context. If you only have the parentheses without the backticks, it wouldn't show any parentheses, right? Okay, so if I did that, I mean, that looks the same to me. <laughs> uh, that's weird. Maybe, okay, okay, so maybe when you have back tick, back tick, that is a function. So like this is a function f yeah. and this is the function thingy thing, yeah. bracket. So because it's a function, but then wouldn't you still name the function? Because then this is saying, and then there's brackets around these guys. But you'd surely, wouldn't you still name it? But then maybe you don't because it is just, it is the function that is fu function, as in part of a function. I don't love that. Uh, what if I... <laughs> no, it doesn't like that. <laughs> maybe you need the back ticks. Yeah, I probably need the back ticks. <laughs> well, it's not back to. Oh, great. Okay. It's a primitive function. Semantically equivalent to the identity function x. Whereas this is slightly more interesting. I mean, it's not interest that I'm looking for here. Okay. Well, yeah, so it's like a function, it's a primitive function. But so I guess like it's, it, because it's part of every function, it's excessive to show it. Mm. But so here, it's kind of been isolated, but because it still is ultimately, we're calling this function, which is the same as this little bracket thing, it's not showing it. Okay, I feel better. I feel that's a, that's a specific example, a very specific thing. I guess maybe it's like, don't freak out if you don't see brackets for every bracket. Okay, equals can also be used in two ways. Construct a simple example that shows both uses. I think I thought it could be used in more than two ways, but... Um, we went with two. Uh, I think I looked at the, in fact, I think I looked at the solutions because I was like, I think I can think of more than two. But, okay, so these example equals, okay, right, that's the example location. Right, okay. Didn't, didn't mess around with any description here. So I guess I thought equals, you've got an argument equals, and you've got an equals assignment equals which is what it said in the solutions. I don't know if they had an example that looked exactly like this, but they had, those were the two that it said. I mean, I guess I also thought, which maybe is different, a different kind of thing, but I was thinking about like, how you also have like, is equivalent to kind of equals. I like mean, you've got two equals. Oh, yeah. I also thought about that. Which I thought was probably more used than like this equals, this kind of assignment equals. Yeah. But, um, but but also I don't know how is this interesting. I guess it's just telling you that there are multiple that some signs have multiple things going on. 
it's kind of a lot of this section is just like overthinking things I think but I guess maybe that's part of advanced stuff okay does minus two to the power of two in specifically in code here yield four or minus four why my immediate assumption is four but am I wrong is it four? yeah I think I think you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was that it. This is one of the exceptions where it starts from the right. Uh, yeah, so it it does two to the power of two because yeah. it's doing this first, and then it does minus, which is obviously not ideal. So you might this way you might need to brackets if you want to have a minus number. Which I feel like that's something which you could very easily not oh, yeah. I do. Imagine myself like messing that up. Yeah. This feels like the kind of, you know, the others, these ones feel like a bit like, sure, I mean, great. And then this one feels like, you know, someone's run the wrong code for three years. And, you know, yeah. But anyway, that's the answer. Okay. What does two? What did he say? Is it two? Two. Because why do you think it's two? Oh no, do is it like do we add and then exponent? What? Oh. It's no. a... My brain just broke. I was reading that as like exponent. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 I forgot that you can use. Oh, I just broke for a second. <laughs> so it's either it's not one would be false plus yeah false. So that could be zero or oh, if it's if it's one plus not one and then not one, it would be uh one plus zero and then not one. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it, it could be, wait, so which way would it go? I think the, so not one would be false first. or yeah. zero. Yeah. And then that would be plus, is this going to be right? Oh, maybe it matters what order they're in. I feel like I've, I've got the answer, but maybe the plus has happened first, but then why, how would that work? Plus false and false, right? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so the right one evaluates to false. Yeah. Because one is converted to true, and then that then equals false. Then you get why is it doing it in this direction though? Okay, that's the logic. Then one plus false is evaluated to one. Did you oh. do the, the tree? The um let's do the tree. Okay. Uh, so yeah so it's doing from the right right yeah not one plus one and then the whole thing and the whole thing yeah, but I don't fully understand why it's going that direction. Because I thought they went left to right. Yeah. Maybe it's a, like maybe I should do whatever it said, syntax or something. Maybe negation happens in a weird way. From left to right, except where indicated. Well, I would argue. Right here, there's an example in the book. Uh, there is one particularly surprising case in R, the exclamation mark, has a much lower precedence. Um, it's got a low, ah. Oh. This allows you to write useful operations like. <laughs> so this has lower precedence, meaning oh. plus is higher precedence yes okay yes i'm getting confused because i'm thinking about how like i'm mixing up precedence with like 
when you've got stuff that's that's so like it's it's not just the precedence matters first and then if you've got any complications it goes right left to right yeah yeah but it doesn't just go left to right obviously yeah because yeah okay cool 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 so yeah you've got really low negation uh precedence so shouldn't we well i guess you have to sort this out first because because you can't add things together you can't add this when you haven't negated it i guess so yeah okay yeah okay cool why does x1 2x2 to x3 to 0 work as in so does that then so wait let's just confirm that that what creates those things yeah oh cool oh yeah <laughs> yeah and then they are um yeah well i mean the first would be what we just talked about would be left we ass it assigns going right to left uh the two reasons you say Ugh, great spacing here <laughs> this invisibly returns the value on the right hand side why does that matter oh because it then allows us to pass like to pipe it on and then okay to chain it right direction yep Okay, well that's fun and useful, question mark. Compare the ASTs of this and this. What have you learnt? Okay, what's the difference between these? Oh, plus and... Yeah, this, yeah I don't know whether I fully cared about this. Oh wait, what is the, this percentage plus again? Uh... Concatenate character vectors. I didn't know that existed. You what? So, so wait, okay, wait, let's so have an example of this. <laughs> okay, so wait, so wait, I'm just going to run this. But then, actually, I can't run this really, can I? Because it doesn't exist. x equals 1, z equals cat. Hmm, that's a shame. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work either, by the way, on my computer. It just gave me null. Uh -huh. It says it's in crayon. Sure. Uh, okay, well, I don't know if this is going to be that helpful, just doing this again. Okay, well, let's see if this gives us any light. Okay, well, the thing that it can tell us about precedence of custom infix functions. Uh, so are these the custom infix functions? No, no, we must make that first. Right, great. That's something that I look forward to doing. So here it's after the plus, but it's above the exponentiation. Um, it was in the previous help file, actually. Yeah, in the... Uh, back to syntax again did it have yeah the here any, any special operators uh, so also has the, oh, okay that's interesting i wondered whether it would be like um which it isn't 
but I wondered whether it'd be like it's just after the one that you've got because this one is after like it's lower precedence than the plus but it's higher precedence than the exponential sign but then this is exponentiation but then this is any oh but then no wait what so it would be lower precedence than both yeah well I agree oh. but it is not showing that no Unless, oh no, wait, should that, is that saying, wait. Unary minus plus. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's for like carrot, for like numbers as opposed to add, subtract here. Yeah, for like a minus two, like an, when that's the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so are we saying that's lower precedence? I thought there were higher precedence than <laughs> at the top. Oh, no, no, yes. No. So ex exponentiation has a higher precedence. So in the second case, first you exponentiate x and y. Yeah. And then you have the um, custom uh, input. Oh, and then you do that. I see, whereas here. You first do the custom and then you use the plus you added. Hmm. So, what is it? Yeah. Right, I see. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Oh, there you go. Helpful. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Pass self. Okay, let's go check. Uh, pretty expressions, which does tab. I'd already have a tab open. Great. I know that's my thing. Great, 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 going well. Uh, expressions. And then these guys, exercises. Oh my God, there were so many exercises. I'm slightly, well, okay. Are there any of these exercises that people are keen to check out now? Because I'm aware that we are halfway through now and we still got to do the other, other sections. I think the seven was easy. Because there's another uh, function yeah. that's express if you use more than one. Yeah, yep. Yes, that's, that's just you add the S. Yeah. Okay, well, we can always circle back around if we feel like we need more exercises. Yeah. Um, Okay, walking this with recursive functions. Okay, I'm gonna see how well my plus definition does this, probably not very well, and then we can go, I'll just copy them to our studio if it's easier. Um, okay, so what we were kind of trying to do here was uh, semi-replicate these kind of functions, um, which kind of offered an interesting example or just examples of kind of recursion when you need to use recursion in your functions um it explained it quite well but yeah okay it's this kind of stuff um and the key thing here is that recursive functions can be quite relevant to these data structures uh because you have this kind of nodes going down and at some point you have like the, the leaves and you don't always know how many you're gonna have to deal with. Um, and so you kind of need to keep going. It's quite a poor explanation, probably you should have just read it directly and that would have been a better explanation. Um, but yes, yeah, so you'll need to be able to like handle the different things that can be happening in those cases uh, so, for example, you'll need to be able to handle 
different arguments uh, in calls, um, but then ultimately it needs to be able to terminate uh, eventually by having the simplest cases solved. Yeah, I struggle with this, as you can probably tell. Yeah, that goes off the bottom of there, so that is rubbish. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, let's copy this. This starts off with like a kind of this start with really need well I mean, all of these things. Okay, so we start creating this function. And so we're trying to create one of these uh, effectively something like find globals, uh, which locates all global variables used by function. Oh god, that's moving around. Um, and so you don't invertly rely on variables to find an apparent environment, or you've got check usage, which checks for a range of common problems, such as unused local variables, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we're, okay, so we're getting these helper functions as an initial base, and then we've got our specific examples, uh, which come a bit later. So this one is looking for like, it returns kind of what type of expression you've got. So uh, here, and then you've got a, Oh. Is that R lang or is that? Yep. Yeah. And you've got your symbol and you've got your call, this little function, for example. Okay, so I think that's, fair, that's kind of straightforward enough function. Uh, then we go down and we've got a wrapper function. So then this gives you, you can use your function that you just created and then it will tell you if it doesn't know how to handle, it kind of gives you an error if it's got a type that it doesn't know about. So put that in there as well. So then you can write this template which walks through the tree using switch. So a curse call, you've got your function, you've got your expression that you just used and then you can have your cases that you know about okay and then you'll want to kind of expand on that um so we're going to do this one which is finding f and t which the concept behind this is that you don't well you can use t and f uh, in many cases to represent true and false but it's considered poor coding practice. So we want to return true if the input contains a logical abbreviation, which is a bit, I feel like I made that's already kind of like it's true if something's T. Um, so let's find the, so this shows the type of T versus true, which I mean, I can just read here, which is kind of like you might expect, which is true is a constant because it is true and true represents true. Whereas here T is a symbol because it's kind of representing true as well. So they'd be passed differently. Uh, so you have trues passed the logical vector uh, and T is a name. Uh, so that then gives us this function. So a string. So it's a symbol if it's this. Yep, okay. Let's see how that works. So then we're putting in true, and that is false because it is a constant, so it returns false, or t, which is a symbol, and specifically this guy. So it returns true, I guess. As string x in. Sure. Uh, so this has been kind of uh, common to write wrappers that provide defaults. Um, so you make a wrapper that quotes input. So we don't need to use x for each time. Okay, yeah, because that's a bit of a pain. So yeah, so you don't have to do logical with the x for. So let's change, that's 
wrap that around that. But I mean, yeah, don't need to do that again. So that does the same thing. So you don't need the extra in, in it. Okay, so now we need to do the recursive cases. So for calls and for pair lists, we're doing the same thing. So we apply the function to each subcomponent. And if any subcomponent contains logical abbreviation, we return true. And we're using sum which iterates over list. Uh, as opposed to, yeah, like any and all, I guess. Uh, so let's look at this. So we've got our switch expra. Uh, and then we've got our pair list, which goes over. So this is, yeah, recursive now. And so if any in that return, well, not any, some. Is some, why is some better than any? Oh, is this not the one where it's like that stops immediately rather than if oh. I yeah, 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 yeah. The other day, and I couldn't remember what function it was, and Google wasn't helping me. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so it fits them. So it's going through all of them, but it's applying this. So if you got something, so then here you can put in. I made that thing. So then you've got here, you've got mean. Uh, that's weird. What does it say? Is that what it says there? Um, and we've got T, right? And so that's true because T is an abbreviation. Why is that false? Doesn't look like it is. What is that doing there? I think it was because if you would not have the um, the recursive this it would uh it would recognize that as the constant uh -huh. and say it's false so there's no tr true like you know abbreviation in there hmm. but, uh, <laughs> not sure <laughs> okay so make your own function yeah okay sure so what if i did because it may be um, first for the constants or something like that. Um, yes. Weird. Paint. What's F? Okay. I would say I'm fifty percent understanding that. Okay. So does that mean that we've done that? When all variables created by assignment. That's a different thing. So we're we now saying that this is done. Well, I guess it's going through if the point is to find it in arguments, then it is doing that. Very satisfying. <laughs> okay. So this is the other example, which is the other function that was kind of uh, borrowing from. Uh, so that is just returning true or false, but you might want to have something a bit more complicated. Uh, so we're looking at variables created by assignment. So this is helpful because it tells us that the first thing is going to be the assignment function, effectively, the symbol. Um, means that the name of the variable the third is value to be assigned. So we're going to return a character vector because there can be other things that are more complicated. Um, so we can implement the base cases like we did last time and get a wrapper around the recursive function. So let's see what that looks like. I designed rec. And that's this is around that because that's means that we don't have to keep doing this every time. I mean, highly exciting. We've got an X. Yeah, we do have an X. Okay. 
Um, so we've again got per going on here. <laughs> Made easy a function that should exist, but currently doesn't. Great. Um, so this new function expects this argument to return a character vector of arbitrary length of facts or results into a single character vector. So if you have like 3G, these letters, A, B, C, and repeat it at random, then it'll flatten them into a single character vector where they look like that. Okay, right. So if you have this, then that becomes that, but it's still, are we saying that's one? I mean, let's see. Yeah. Well, I probably, yeah, I've that complicated that. Uh, okay, so you've got flat map, which is creating this. So, oh my god, it's so long. I'm we Did we learn about, I was just yelling at my screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> did we learn about flatten when we did the functionals chapters? I feel like I've, I hadn't seen it before, but this seems quite, quite lovely. Like unlist, but easier. Making longer vectors. Oh. Okay, maybe we'll an arrow moving this. Okay, this just says, i.e. it flattens. Okay, <laughs> right, thanks, great, that's helpful. Yeah, no, cool. no, so I'm gonna say no. I'm glad I have seen the existence of this function now. That is all <laughs> I wanted to share. Uh, Jack, up to. Okay, so now we're extending this out. We've got our base cases. We've got our flat map characters here. We've got something going on here. The call, if is call, so if it is this, then we want as string the second bit of this, which is going to be the symbol, or else we continue or flatten it in some way. Is that one? So, because if we did this, so then it's telling us that A, because it's found out that A is the, that part of the is the second bit of this functional call. Uh, find a sign, or oh, you can do this. Oh, so does it do, oh, and then it can do multiple ones because it's recursive, so then it, yeah, flattens them out as well, so that you get both in your list. Okay, that's clever. Ah, oh, I'm all the way back there, did it? Now we need to make it more robust. Um, so what happens when we assign to the same variable multiple times? It just uh, does AA here, even though we've done, you know, assign the same thing. So you can fix this at the level of the wrapper. So you can do for unique ones. I'm not going to just repeat this because I think this is less complicated to understand. It's just fixes. So here, it will undo A. I guess you might not want it to do that. You might want it to be like you've assigned to A twice or something, but I mean, maybe not. I guess it depends what your actual use case of this is. What is it with nested calls? Currently, we only return the first R because we immediately terminate recursion when we have the first one of these. So even though, as we established earlier, you can do this ridiculous thing, it doesn't represent that. So uh, we can extract that into a separate function where I guess it effectively looks for um, if it's called cool, and symbol and oh but then is the next thing a symbol or is the next thing the original okay cool so then it knows whether to keep going is that how it knows because 
so what it's saying is this is is this a symbol of x which is the first thing which is getting a sign so that's a symbol that's a symbol that's a symbol and the first thing so wouldn't they am i misremembering the way around that they go that's not a symbol so i guess it's saying like when that's not a symbol it does something different as string and then it stops i think mm. it's super satisfied with that explanation oh but then we have children i mean am i satisfied with that at all i'm going to copy this one find a sign right okay maybe this is different pair list and we used find a sign call here call is find a sign call of x i mean well done i don't fully understand that does anyone yeah so are we splitting it into two our left hand side which is oh uh, yeah two. right okay Let's lap. right i see my brain y'all oh yeah i should have like probably read that was LHS and that's what it was doing there. Yeah. Okay. The complete version is quite complicated. It's important <laughs> to remember we wrote it by working our way up by writing simple component parts. I mean, okay, I guess like with this is that like I can see like it's kind of difficult because like I don't know if it's just laziness on my part, but there is to some extent because he's written it out. I'm just quite reliant on it being that's the way to do it. And yeah. I feel like that in some ways makes it harder to get it to go in. Um, whereas if I had a kind of, real, again, real use case that I was trying to work out, like I, I think I'd be able to work it out. It's just that trying to understand the reasons that someone else has done stuff is sometimes more complicated. But I think for this, I kind of understand why you would use it. Like, like if you have you write a huge function or something mm. and you to test if the if the um the things like the the symbols you assign something to are already given, and you would overwrite them. Mm. So like like a testing function. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like it's all, which I guess makes, I guess that is like ultimately what a lot of this stuff's about. It's about kind of making the way that you do stuff like more rigorous and more kind of like error proof. Although I don't know if that's quite going to be true if you're doing stuff that's more complicated and I help you to introduce errors, but yeah. Um, I'm gonna I realize it's seven almost seven thirty, so I'm gonna quickly go to specialist data structures. It's pretty short. Um just so that we can fit that in. And I feel like exercises we've done quite a lot of them. Uh so just these are kind of like notes really in terms of things to be aware of. Uh so pair lists, um they when you work within calls to the function function uh the formal arguments are stored in a pair list and the key here is that you can treat it like a list which is cool and means i'm i'm not that surprised by that so missing arguments the empty symbol is used to represent missing arguments and broadly speaking therefore you just need to care about it if you're creating functions programmatically with missing arguments so you can make an empty symbol in these ways you can use missing r or extra and it doesn't print anything. And so there's a way to check if you have one with R lang is missing. And the main way that this is important is if you have the dot, dot, dot stuff, which you have in functions when you have like various arguments passed in, and that's always associated with an empty symbol. Oh, it's got a name, it's not just dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't. Like tilde 
Uh, oh yeah, here's another one that behaves like lists. Expression vectors are only produced by two base functions and they behave like lists. Great. Those expression and pass. Um, yeah, okay, I think we've kind of like run out of time. But yeah, I feel, I don't, wouldn't say I feel like, like some of this feels like pretty complicated, but also I feel like a lot of it is just a case of like understanding the very, very fine detail. And when you actually get to it, it makes sense. Like I think a lot of the parsing grammar stuff makes sense and the trees and looking at the order of stuff makes sense. Um, and so once that makes sense, and I think like applying it will be okay. Um, but I do say that with the uh, understanding that I don't, wouldn't say like I would want to teach a class on this confidently so I kind of was scooting ahead like clicking through chapters um mm -hmm. and if you look at the first like paragraph of chapter 21 translating our code there mm -hmm. is to be a very clear perfect use case that I wish we had started motivating this whole section off with oh really yes like what if you want to translate our code into SQL right sure yep <laughs> see that idea so, great use case and I am motivated to want to understand how one could do that <laughs> I wish he'd started with this because this I'm like okay yes I can understand why we need to know all of this crap so that we can do something like this that makes sense to me yeah yeah that's cool that'll be right. fun that'll be fun once we, I mean he doesn't actually do SQL it looks like we're doing HTML and LaTeX um okay but fine okay. I feel motivated. And then you can do SQL. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was just going to start having to do a SQL project. And I was like, oh, look at this. I don't have to actually learn SQL. I'll just type in the black code. <laughs> <laughs> I can put it on my CV. Yes, I know SQL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, look, our next chapter.